Achieving extraordinary focus is like unlocking a superpower. This is one of the secret ingredients that separates the ordinary from the extraordinary. Imagine you are standing at the free throw line in game seven of the NBA finals. For only a couple of seconds left in your team is down by one. If you make both free throws, you're gonna be a champion. If you don't, you are gonna be the reason your team lost. There are thousands of people watching. So much is at stake. Your hands are shaking a bit, but you take hold of yourself, ignore distractions, and bam, you did it. It's about immersing yourself so deeply in your craft that distractions fade away and time seems to stand still. Sounds fantastic? I'm sure it does. Today I will show you how you can get into that state, or at least make it more likely to happen. And before we start, take a second to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. I've invested a lot of my time and I promise I will provide you with tons of valuable information in this video. Let's start. Timing is everything, they say. Can't agree more. Chronotype is like your body's internal clock that decides if you're a morning person, which is also called lark, or a night owl, or somewhere in between. It's all about when you feel more awake and alert during the day or night. And this is quite important. I'm personally a morning person, always have been, and if I do it any other way, I feel like I'm missing out on hours of potential, good feeling and productivity. Knowing your chronotype helps you figure out the best times to do things like work, study or relax based on when you naturally feel more energetic. When it comes to cognitive and physical performance, night owls are compromised earlier in the day. By the way, there is a phenomenon called post-lunch tip, that sleepy drowsy feeling that hits you in the afternoon, usually after your lunch. And if it was high in carbohydrates, or if you're a morning person, it's more likely to be felt. Actually, it does happen to me from time to time. What's the game plan? We'll talk about two types of plans, one for morning types, and one for evening. You know what? Let's start with the sort of people like me. First thing first, wake up time. Let's suppose between 6 and 8 am. Drink some water. I'm a fan of cold showers, so I can't omit to mention it as well. Whether to have a breakfast and what type of food to choose is also a great topic for a whole video. Brush your teeth, maybe have a small walk outside in order to get exposed to some sunlight, and then gradually start to immerse yourself into your focus session. I suggest having a longer span of morning work, approximately from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. While your mind is working at its best, do high focus work as much as you can. Don't leave tasks that are more challenging or of high priority for later in the day. If there are quite difficult assignments that require deep thinking, and you'll probably want to procrastinate on them, it's the perfect time to tackle them. And of course, pay attention to your environment, which is another important aspect I will talk about. All right, the most difficult and important part of the day is over. Congrats, you did it. What about that 2 to 6 p.m. slot? Now you could do more routine tasks that don't require as much concentration. There is a chance of post lunch dip, so this time isn't as great for the types of tasks we prefer to finish in the morning. And it's okay, you can be at the peak of your performance every day, all day long. As for me, the best thing to do is to decompress, take a longer break, have a nice meal without hurrying, maybe even take a nap. If you watched my previous videos, you know why a nap around 20 minutes long is a pretty good option. You can also take a walk, do some sports, go to the gym. I believe I tend to perform best in the gym in the early afternoon. And what about that last part of your day? You can finish it with more recovery activities, having dinner, socializing, enjoying time with your family, doing hobbies. The point is to disconnect from work pressure, knowing that you already did a great job and deserve to rest. As you approach your bedtime, choose more common activities to make the transition as smooth as possible. Now, what about owls? I suggest sticking to approximately the same length of those time intervals. Let's suppose you wake up from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. So that high focus session should start at 12 a.m. and finish at 6 p.m. The second from 6 to 10, and the last one from 10 p.m. to 10 a.m. So basically the most difficult part of the day will be around the early afternoon. All right, guys, I'm so glad you're still with me. Don't doze off unless it's time for you to go to sleep and follow that productive schedule. We move to our final massive part of this video, distractions. 
They come in many forms. Picture this, you're deep in an important task when suddenly your phone lights up with notifications and you glance over intending to quickly check. But even that couple of seconds take a toll on your productivity. Notifications has been shown to damage task performance, although they are generally short in duration. I personally used to fall victim to this in the past. I believe this is the sort of destruction that deserves paying attention to the most. Even if you're already in a quiet place and you don't have any person nearby, notifications still can ruin it. So it's definitely worth it diving into your device settings and reviewing which apps are allowed to send notifications. And of course, you can also use do not disturb mode, at least when you're in the middle of your focused bout of work. Thanks for sticking around. Now let's discuss a related topic. When the habit turns into an obligation, it becomes an addiction. Phone addiction may increase the risk of anxiety, depression, and sleep deficits. It may also negatively affect academic performance. But how do you know you have it? How do you know you're addicted? If you use your cell phone most of the time and unable to cut back on its usage, use it as a solution to boredom and feel anxiety or depression when your phone is out of your reach, you know you're addicted to it. So beware. Now there is another type of distraction that's worth mentioning. Auditory distractions. Whether it's the chatter of co-workers in an open office environment or the noise pollution of the traffic outside, they can make it difficult to stay on track. And you know what? One of the most challenging aspects is that they often come from sources beyond our control, such as other people. Whether it's a person who insists on conducting loud phone calls or neighbor who decides to start apartment renovation, dealing with external noise can be frustrating and exhausting. In situations where you think you can't do anything about it, finding a quiet and secluded place is incredibly beneficial. Cozy corners, libraries and coffee shops are all great options for escaping the hustle and bustle of everyday life and creating a conductive environment for concentration and productivity. These environments offer a silent retreat, allowing you to immerse yourself in your work and focus without interruption. All right, guys, that's all for now. I didn't come close to covering the topic in depth, but don't worry, I will create another video on this topic, a second part in which I will focus more on habits that will help you get into that flow state. So subscribe and hit that like button if you're interested. I truly hope this video is helpful and definitely have a good day.